always found that the easiest way to do the influence lines is to do what's called the qualitative influence line method. The qualitative influence line method means um, releasing the point or the, the, the support at which you would like to find the influence line and then looking at the deflective shape and the, um, of that structure, of the released structure. And that deflected shape is actually just going to be the shape of the influence line. And from there, you can use geometry. And it's once I started doing them that way that it really helped me um, figure it out. So I actually, uh, you might be able to see underneath this page, um, the previous time I solved it, but I had some camera problems, so I needed to redo it. So uh, that's why this paper is here. But we're going to move on to the second part of the video after this, okay? So stay tuned for that. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at our beam here. So we have beam A, B, C, okay? B is uh, three meters to the right of A. And the question asks us to find the influence line for the reaction at AY, CY, and the shear at B. So we're going to take a look at AY right here, okay? Okay, and I'm just gonna draw a couple lines here separating these. So uh, we're gonna draw the, uh, the beam, okay? And when I say we want to find the influence line for AY, we're going to what's called release uh, the beam at A. Okay, so we're going to draw C as usual, okay? But what we're going to do is we're going to replace AY, the, the pin support here, with a one kilonewton force, okay? And then what we're going to do after that is we're simply going to take a look at the deflected shape of the released beam. So what would happen if we removed the support and we pushed upwards here? Well, what would happen is the beam would deflect up like this. And then it would go back down towards C like this, okay? And the units actually for influence lines are going to be one kilonewton per kilonewton. Okay, that's going to cancel. It's just going to be simply one. So um, one trick to know as well, okay, during influence lines is that if the influence line tends towards a support, uh, it's either a roller or a pin, okay, it's going to pass through zero at that point, okay? So as you can see, our influence line is passing through zero at the, uh, at the support here. Now, how do we draw the influence line from this? Well, we simply now, this deflected shape here of the release structure is the shape of the influence line for the re uh, reaction AY. Okay, so this is our influence line. One, okay, unitless, that's plus. This is zero, this is A, and this is C. That's it, that's the answer. Okay, so simple as that. So, um, you know, I try and avoid like the equation method, cutting the beam and, you know, taking the right and the left. It can be very confusing and very difficult. Let's try exactly the same thing to find the influence line for CY. So let's draw the beam again. Let's release the beam at C and apply our one kilonewton load. We still have our pin support at A, okay? And this is nine meters, okay? So what is the deflected shape of this beam gonna look like? Well, it's the same thing, but opposite. Okay. That's the shape of the deflected beam for the released beam. And our influence line is simply going to be one and zero, and that's A and that's C. Simple as that, okay? So let's do something that's a little bit different. Let's try and find the influence line for the shear at B, okay? So let's start here. We have point B here. We have A and C, okay? So when we release the beam at B now, okay? When we release the beam at B, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the beam here, okay? We're gonna cut it, and when we cut the beam, as you know, we're going to have two shears on both sides and with our sign convention there and you know they have to be opposite and they have to be equal like this okay and what is that going to make the shape deflect in, in what manner okay well simply the beam will look like this the deflected shape will look like this okay so now now that we know that okay because we know that the deflected shape is the shape of the influence line we can go ahead and draw that now okay perfect this is gonna be negative and this is positive, but this one's a little bit different because we don't know what the values here for the peaks are, right? Because it's not in the center, it's, it's off to the left at B, it was three meters, so we don't know. So I'm gonna just gonna call that Y and I'll call that X, just so you know what the calculations that I'm doing are, okay? And it, since we always apply a unit, a one kilonewton unit force, okay, the sum of these two forces must equal one. So that means that the slope, okay, is, is equal to the slope of this line, okay? So these slopes are equal here, all right? Even though, you know, they may not look the same, they are. Okay, so this is one over nine, okay? Because we have nine meters and a one, uh, one rise and a nine meter run. So one over nine, rise over run. Okay, so we know that the slope of this is one over nine, okay? So 
if we if this is six and this is three, okay, and uh, we have the slope, we can find the height, right? So let's solve for y. So y slope one over nine is equal to rise, which is y over run, which is six. Six times uh, one over nine is equal to two over three. So y is equal to 2 over 3. Perfect. Now, what about x? We'll do exactly the same thing. We know x is negative, okay? So we'll put the, we'll fill that negative in after, but the slope is the same as for this line. So we have 1 over 9 is equal to x over 3, right? Because our run is 3 now. So x is equal to 3 times 9. So 3 times 1 over 9, which is 1 over 3. Okay, so it's negative because it's down 1 over 3. Okay, so there you go. That's the influence line for, for the shear of B. So I hope that concept makes a little bit of sense to you. Okay, let's, uh, let's apply it to a more complicated beam, okay? Okay, so we're asked to solve for the influence line for AY and CY of this beam. Now, this looks like a really complicated beam. These are both hinges, in case you can't tell. Okay, internal hinges. And uh, we're, yeah, we're asked to find the influence line of the reaction at AY and CY. This looks really tricky, but we can apply exactly the same logic that we did on these to solve for a trickier beam and I'll show you how. So let's start with AY. Okay, so the influence line for AY. Okay, we're going to go ahead and draw the beam. Okay, we're going to release the structure at A like we always do. Okay, so we're going to replace this support with a one kilonewton force. And what do you think is going to happen to the beam? Well, if you think about how an internal hinge works, the internal hinge kind of separates this portion of the beam from this portion here. Okay, so what's going to happen here? Well, if we have this is the beam and this is the, this is, for example, AB, the pen is AB. What's going to happen is you're going to go ahead and push up on the left side of the pen and it's going, it's not going to influence the rest of the beam, is it? Because the internal hinge is separating AB from the rest of the beam. So all that's going to happen to the deflected shape, we're going to have our one kilonewton per kilonewton like this. Okay, and then when it gets to B, nothing, A, this isn't it be influencing the rest of the beam, so it's just zero. So the influence line is simply one, and it's a little triangle in the corner there. Okay, so really, really simple, and um, I hope this is starting to make a bit of sense to you now. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the influence line for CY, and that's going to be a little trickier. Okay, so I'm going to give myself a little more room. Okay, so we're going to draw the beam out again, and we're going to draw on it. Okay, our deflected shape. So we have, so at CY, we apply our one kilonewton. Okay, and that's going to cause it to deflect upwards. All right, so now we see we have four meters here for 10, four and four meters, right? And this is A. B, C, D, E, F. Okay, so, well, what is this going to look like here? Simply uh, simply put, if, for example, we have a beam like this, and you just have to think about this. I mean, you don't really need to, uh, to do much other than think about it. If you have a beam here and we push on this side, what's going to happen? Right? If we push on the left side of the center, the beam, the left side is going to go up, and the, the right side is not going to go up, okay? So that's exactly what's going to happen here, right? So we go all the way over to B, okay, like this. That's what the deflected shape is going to look like. We go to zero at the roller support. Now, when we get to the hinge, okay, the hinge is going to cause an inflection point in the deflected shape, right? Because it's going to look like this, essentially. So if we have this, it's going to go like that, right? So it's going, the hinge, in essence, is going to change the direction of our deflected shape. So whenever you hit a hinge with your deflected shape, just change the direction. So we come down here, and then the influence line continues past D, okay, till we get to this hinge here, and it's going to go up towards F. Okay, so it gets to the E, point at E, and that's exactly what we've drawn down here, okay? So we just trace the influence line shape. This is the, the deflected shape is the shape of the influence line here, of the released structure. Okay, and I can go ahead and label this, so we're not confused. So this is point A, this is B, okay, this is point C here. We know that this is 1, okay, this is D. E and F, negative and positive. Cool, so now what we can do is we can simply use the slope of this line, okay, and we can use similar triangles in order to solve for the points on the influence line, okay? So, well, we know this slope, we know this distance is 10, 
we know this is 4, this is 4, and we know that this is 4, and this is 4, right? So all we need to do is use our geometry scales, okay? We know that we have a rise here of 1 and a, a run of 10, so the slope of this, slope 1 over 10, perfect. And using that slope of 1 over 10, okay, what we can do is we have... Um, we need to find the rise here of this little triangle so that we can find what this value is, right? So we have the slope and we have the run, right? So we have slope equals rise over run. Okay, four times uh, four times one over ten equals x. So that's equals x. And if we get this little distance, okay, which and we add it to one, we're going to get this distance here. Okay, so this is the peak of our influence line. So we have one plus four over ten. That's going to be one point four. So this is 1.4 over here. So we know the influence line goes down to zero here, okay? And we know that the influence line goes down to zero here, okay? So what is it over here? Well, we have the slope of the line, right? The slope of the line is, what is it? It's one, it's, uh, one over 10, and we have the run of four here again, okay? So we just did that, didn't we? It's, f it's four over 10. So what is the value of the influence line here? It's negative 0.4, perfect and it goes back to zero here. So the final influence line for this, it's a little bit uh, cramped, I know, but I ran out of space, my apologies, okay, is going to look like this. This is gonna be 1.4, at C it's going to be one, and this is going to be negative 0.4, okay? And that is point E. A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, so and that's it. So as simple as that. Um, I hope that video helps. I know it helped me um, when I was, you know, doing this kind of stuff. This this was the method that really made me understand what how influence lines work. So I hope that helps you. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.